Serena, tell us, a, tell us about yourself. Yeah, cool. Hey, everybody. I know most all of you by name, some of you first time on video, but um, I basically have recently co-founded I'd Hired Out Me with Hytham, who you'll hear from in a second. Um, I'm from New York, born and raised. My career has been built in sales and marketing. I'm currently based in Cape Town, South Africa. Fun fact. So if you need any Africa facts, I'm your girl. Um, and otherwise, I'm just really excited to, to hear from all you guys and pick your brains, share some thoughts, tell some jokes. I'm, I'm ready for it. Hypen will tell you more about what we're up to. Love it. Marcus, I feel like you don't need an intro. Well, okay, of course I need an intro. So first off, I'm Marcus Chan, founder of Bentley Consulting Group. So I work directly with B2B sales pros, help them absolutely sell more and crush it in selling mass amounts of revenue dollars as fast as possible and as ethically as possible. So I got invited here by Francois, so I feel very, very fortunate. And I'm excited I'm out here in Portland, Oregon on the West Coast. And it sounds like Portland, Oregon has been in the international news for all the protests and crazy things that are happening. Yes, those things are happening, but I live in suburbia because I'm super basic like that. So I don't, it doesn't impact me, impact me at all. I'm here safe, it's great. Love the neighborhood, it's very safe, so we're totally fine. So we're just hanging out, Instacarting everywhere. That's it, you know. Well, Serena gave a fun fact, so I feel Scooting. like she set the bar, and 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 I I know I know you throw speedos in your tagline. Okay, all right. Okay, so fun fact. So fun fact. Uh, my first real job I got outside working for my parents was I got a job selling speedos at a speedo store, okay. and it was absolutely killer. It was like it was a great job, and uh, I, little did I know that I would like break all their speedo selling records and it just, it just happened. I guess it was a gift was born as a result of that. And by the way, I used to be competitive swimmer for years and that's how I got into it. It wasn't like I just like stumbled into it. It was like, I swam competitive for years. I knew the owner. It kind of worked out well. I needed a job. I was in college. I had to pay for school. And of course, selling speedos for minimum wage by the hour only made sense at the time. Love it. Amy, that's a tough one to follow. Dude, seriously. If I walked in a store and tried to get a job selling Speedos, I'd be fired like halfway through the day for making inappropriate comments. Like, it's I a small company. There's no rules. There's no rules there. You do oh my gosh. I'd be like, I'd be like, hey, I'd be trying to sell like inserts and crap. Like, hey, man, <laughs> that's Oh Leather speedos. <laughs> I cannot follow that, Marcus. <laughs> you can spell sell speedos. You can sell anything. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, I don't know how to follow that. I sell cybersecurity. Cyber. Uh, I sell firewalls and stuff, and stuff to keep people safe and not getting no hacked. Deal. And um, yeah, so I work for Fortinet. I'm a territory account manager. I cover Mississippi and Alabama. So. My Southeast peeps, you need to hit me up for some firewalls. Um, but yeah, I've been in sales for a hot minute now. I've kind of worn a lot of different hats. Uh, sometimes I know what I'm doing and sometimes I, I scare myself a little bit. But I'm here and I'll try not to scare Serena and hype them. And I'm glad to have you guys on. <laughs> awesome. Patrick. What's up, everybody? I am the Pinellas County famous Tawny Patty D. Diddy Downs. Some may say I am the Jimmy Stewart if he was a 90s baby. Others may <laughs> say that I'm the love child of a garbage pail kid in the pink Care Bear. Who knows? I'm excited to give you feedback, though, and hopefully we can get through this without anybody crying. <laughs> I want to beat the people who are calling you that. <laughs> <laughs> well, my parents mostly. <laughs> my gosh. <laughs> Justin, uh, you've had all this time to, to prep. I'm going to crash and burn, but, you know, I'm ready for it. Yeah, so I'm Justin Michael, and I'm a self-proclaimed futurist, um, part cyborg, which parts is uh, I'll leave in the eye of the beholder. I prognosticate, I uh, delegate, and, uh, yeah, I'm ready for our machine future to submit to my robot overlords. Thank you. <laughs> I felt like there was the start of a rap there. Um, <laughs> Anyway, I, I won't wrap today. Um, so I, I sell, <laughs> my name is Francois Bordeaux. I work for Encore Business Solutions and uh, I sell uh, Microsoft products. I've worked in the Microsoft ecosystem for over a decade. And I get to uh, get on this show Friday with Patrick and Amy. And uh, we don't laugh this hard every time, but we, we always don't take it too seriously. So, uh, Hytham, 
the floor is yours. You know, we're awesome. here to help you. Um, there's no really rules. Uh, so however kind of format you want to use, sharing a screen, uh, grease pole wrestling sometimes. Uh, I figured. Hasn't happened yet, but it's happening. Um, <laughs> but anyway, uh, tell us about yourself. Tell us about I Hire uh, Me. And um, yeah, let's help you get better. Love it. All right. Yeah. So definitely want to keep this interactive. Um, really looking forward to chatting with you guys. Um, thank you so much for jumping in. So my name is Haitham Ellen Babby. Uh, I have a background in sales and marketing, spent my career in a number of different roles from really big companies like IBM all the way through to high growth startups. Uh, most recently, Serena and I were partners at a B2B sales agency um, for about three years and then COVID hit. Everything got flipped upside down. Um, a lot of our clients were affected by the pandemic and a lot of our friends and colleagues were laid off. But at the same time, we were seeing that there were a lot of companies and a lot of sectors that were growing really fast and hiring. So we started making some of those intros, making some of those connections within our network. And then organically over the past few months, we've kind of grown into a pretty awesome community of sales, marketing and talent leaders. Uh, we're coming together. A lot of what we do is driven by video for a number of different reasons, as you guys all know, uh, video is a really great way to stand out and invoke emotion and tone. Uh, and it's something that a lot of people are using in sales and marketing nowadays. The way that we use video more specifically, uh, we like to call it video with intention. And uh, one of the things that we all know kind of coming from sales and marketing is that we come across challenges every day where you're in a very competitive market. It's really difficult to get people's attention. There are a lot of objections that we need to overcome. There are different ways and techniques that we can use to break through all of that noise. And it's no different when you are someone who's trying to sell yourself into a role, right? In a lot of ways, selling yourself into a job is very much the same as a B2B sale. It's, you know, 80 grand a year, or 100 grand a year contract. You're trying to get through sometimes multiple stakeholders. So we thought, why not take some of the best practices that we know in sales and marketing and help people apply that to their job hunt? So the way that we do that, and Justin has experienced this before, is we'll get on video, we'll do small group sessions, and we will dive into a candidate's challenges, and we will identify what sorts of best practices we know that work in sales and marketing that might be able to get applied to that job hunt. They go through that experience, we capture it all on video, we broadcast that content across our network, and get people hired. It's been working really well. People are getting interviews. People are getting responses like, man, this was, this was such a great email. Thanks for, uh, you know, taking the time to send this. Like, it's pretty amazing. Some of the responses that we've been able to get, and we want to now get this message out to more people. Um, we had a lot of success in the beginning, just like hitting the ground running. We were one of the first to help sales and marketing talent specifically. We were one of the first to, uh, start applying some of these best practices to the job hunt. We got some really great hosts like Morgan Ingram, Justin Michael, Dale Dupree, Daryl Prail, Jake Dunlap, a number of different uh, top voices on LinkedIn. All of you guys here are invited as well. You're, you're on our list for sure. You'll get a video invite from me very soon. Um, but now we're kind of at the point where a lot of the lists where candidates are like, we are looking for a job, we need help. We've kind of ran through a lot of those lists and we've gotten people into our community. Uh, every time someone like Justin or others posts one of our videos on LinkedIn, we get a lot of traffic and we get a decent amount of signups as well. But we want to take it to the next level. And we're thinking about different business models that we might be able to run that uh, kind of stays true to our mission of really helping people and not doing everything for money, uh, as well as educate people on this kind of new way of doing things, right? Like we all kind of know that these things might work, but a lot of times when you think of going to get a job, it's like, I need to redo my resume. I need to go hire a career coach. I need to do a cover letter. I need to do all these kind of more like basic things, but it's not like they're thinking, I need to get on video with a sales or marketing leader to apply best practices to my job hunt and get really great content. Like they're not thinking that top of mind. So we want to educate the market on that. We don't want to spend a bunch of money on paid advertising, obviously, um, since we're all doing this on a volunteer basis right now. So would love to kind of hear um, what your guys' impression is of what we've been doing so far. would love to dive into our website a bit, see if we're getting that message across well enough, and then any other ideas that you have uh, for how we might be able to help more people. So quick question, Hytham. Um, are you, uh, sorry, are you, uh, how are you guys monetizing right now? Are you doing through like one-on-one -one coaching sessions, consulting? Is there a package or offer 
and mm-hmm. you're selling directly to consumers, right? So you are selling to the professionals who are looking for a job. Is that right? Yeah, it's a good question. So long term, yeah. um, we do want to have an enterprise element because we do believe that if people are able to learn these best practices very quickly and apply them in the job hunt and then get into a job and actually apply a lot of the same best practices to their first year, they can hit the ground running and make companies more successful Mm -hmm. and basically be a better employee. But um, right now, the biggest value that we're able to add is getting people hired much faster. So what we don't want to do is say, I know that you haven't gotten a paycheck in a while, pay us, you know, whatever amount of money to jump into this program um, and we also don't want to do like necessarily something that's so services based where it's like we're selling our hours um, because it's just not as scalable. So what we're doing now, and we've just rolled this out over the last week and it's been received pretty well, is we created this program that we're calling Hired. And basically with a kind of small cohort out of our membership, we're going to go deeper. So usually the, the experience is like you jump in, you, you know, fill out your form you um, jump into a video session with someone like Justin, you work on kind of like general best practices, how you can stand out. And then you jump into another session where you actually write emails that are designed to get you interviews. So we'll use like Josh Braun's methods or Beck Collins methods and other, you know, best, best practice templates, Morgan Ingram's video templates, for example, to get people interviews. At that point, we probably would have worked with that person for two or three weeks. And we have identified one, that they're coachable uh, and can apply feedback very quickly. Two, they have very specific challenges that they need us to help with. And three, there are gaps that we've identified in the way that they're going about things that we know that we can help with. So for those people, we basically come out with a program where it's a flat fee that's uh, not paid until they actually get hired. So they'll pay like nine, it's like nine bucks. Right now the pricing is like, we're testing different price points. But as of now for the first cohort, it's $9 a month to get started, like very small amount, get started. And then once you get hired within 60 days, um, you pay around a $1,400 fee. It's like 1475, nine bucks a month. You pay the balance within 60 days after you get hired. And that's it. We kind of align our incentives. We go deeper. We get on video. We still do the same thing, but we just do it with a kind of smaller group of people so we can really go deep. I actually really like this model. Do you know a lot of VA organizations that like help veterans get like more out of their VA disability um, have the same structure where they will do the legwork up front to help them, you know, turn in all their legal paperwork, get all their doctor's appointments done, blah, 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 right? Submit all that to the VA. And then only when that veteran or whatever gets that additional disability, do they recoup their expenses essentially. So it's Mm -hmm. it's actually very smart, safe play for someone. It's very easy to sell, right? Because you're selling it on the future success. So I, I like it. I think I'd be interested to see with so many people unemployed, Um, how this is going to be like extra beneficial for them really to stand out. So I don't know, I'd make the investment, you know, because that's, that's, that's the killer right now is how do you stand out and see if thousands of applicants and maybe even double the number they would normally get for Mm -hmm. any particular given role. I would imagine like in the, the, like if I'm a graduate, you know, whether it's college uh, or, you know, we we're all familiar with a bunch of these kind of SAS um, training SDR schools, um, you know, they, maybe they would want to partner with you, but, but my guess is you guys, you guys know there's a demand here. It's, it's probably just like sharpening the focus on maybe those, that target or that ICP, like where should you invest your time? Cause we, we could probably sit here and give you lots of like, uh, areas to, to focus on, but you know, would you say you've already seen in, in one area more traction? Like, have you seen, let me ask you this. Have you seen somewhere where it doesn't work? Um, it's usually people, I, and don't, you know, don't take this the wrong way because everyone has their own reasons. And a lot of it isn't necessarily their fault, quote unquote, but it's like the people who aren't coachable are the ones that are really hard to break through to, right? And I think that's the same in any sort sure. of like profession. And maybe those just aren't the right people that, you know, we yeah. necessarily can help, which is fine. Um, we have seen a huge difference between the way that salespeople receive this versus marketing people. Interesting. 
you know, because for marketing people, it's like totally brand new. They're like, you know, I just need to get a job. You know, I just need to build a really strong network and they're really focused on getting intros. Right. And a lot of people like we had a call to action and we were doing intros in the beginning. Like we were literally just doing intros. That's kind of how we were doing it. And it was like, sign up for intros. And people were like, hell yeah, I need intros. That's the only way I'm going to break through. Right. But now hiring managers are bombarded with intros. Even like everyone's like, this is such a strong person. You really need to meet this person. So now all of a sudden intros is becoming very noisy. Right. So it's not enough, but people still, I don't know if it's, I don't want to say it's laziness. I just think it's like something they know. And they're like, if I can just get a strong intro and just get a chance to get my foot in the door, like that's all I need. And they just kind of just stop there. Hmm. Yeah. It's perceived so. as like safe and reliable hmm. when that's yeah. kind of not so much the case anymore. It's not, it's not enough. And like sure. salespeople get it and they know that they have to be doing these things. And then there's kind of like, I'm already doing it. Do I really need more of it? Yeah. Is there a clear end result of what the cost, the target, your target market is going to receive out of working with you. Like yeah, out, outside getting hired, are, are they crystal clear? Because some people are like, I'm going to develop skills to get hired versus I'm going to get hired. So it's a very different yeah. um, focus, right? Yeah. So we obviously can't guarantee that they get right. hired, right? Right. Um, a lot of them have gotten hired. A lot of them have gotten interviews, mm -hmm. but what we hear the most is like the mindset shift. And the teaching and reteaching of a lot of things that they kind of knew, but didn't realize like, wow, I can actually, you know, like there are best practices around this. And in a lot of ways, I feel like we're selling a process, right? Yep. Um, and they can use that in their, in their life. Forget about even just their professional life, just like yep. their entire life, basically their personal life and their personal relationships too. Um, and in a lot of ways, it's accountability as well. So like, you know, you, 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 people are getting rejected, you know, after going through like grueling hours of assignments and this and that, and just knowing that there's a community there supporting them. A lot of times it's the emotional part that comes through in a lot of our feedback videos. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, that's basically what it is. I wonder, I wonder if there's too, there's some strategic partnerships that you could make um, that you could monetize as well with like actual HR talent scouts and hiring agencies that are already operating. They already have a lot of infrastructure in place, but the thing the the key fundamental that they're missing is this more modernized approach to scaling and getting people more visibility. Um, because so you're absolutely right on the intros side of things. Like, because I've gotten hit up by people trying to get into Fortinet, like for weeks, you know, sending me messages, Hey, can you be my referral? I'm like, dude, I don't know you. Like, first off, like, I don't know, could we talk first, maybe, you know, and I'm not going to go research you to get you a job, like, you know, so, um, but I have jumped on calls and like, what are you doing to make yourself more visible to the hiring managers? Um, you know, because I'm not going to put my neck out for you and make an introduction even if I don't see that you're the type of person that could show up on that role day one and represent not only Fortinet, but also me, because I, I'm like, put my name out for you. So I think that you're 100% right. Like me sending an internal email saying, hey, this dude's interested. I think he could, I think he could make the cut um, isn't, isn't enough. Um, so I'd be curious to see that HR talent scouts in, in organizations that are already kind of um, deeply ingrained in this world wouldn't be willing to hire you as kind of like an add-on benefit um, to their current process. Um, I mean, it's like buying software, you know, sometimes you need software to plug a hole and fill a gap. And that's a massive gap. Like even like we had lemons on here, right. And what she does is like, would be very um, compatible, I think with what you guys do too, because she's doing more analytical, like um, personality assessments and things like that to quantify how capable this person is to be able you know, to actually to do, to do the job. Like she gives them challenges where they actually have to go and like create a marketing portfolio or something like that. And then the organization is able to see how well that person performed on the personality assessment that they did and also on the actual challenge. But what she's doing is very analytical and very like very niche. What you're doing is more kind of the broad, the broader appeal, more of the face forward, 
um, social aspect of it, getting them more visibility, attraction. And so I think finding alignments like that for um, hired in all of these other subsets of this organ of this world, this HR recruiting world, um, I think you could monetize all of them, you know, I mean, strategically, because you're filling a niche that they're weaker on. So I would look mm-hmm. at how to, you know, monetize that. What can, what, what is the package or the portfolio portfolio that you would bring to the table that would be above and beyond what they're currently doing for all of these recruits? And how much is that going to cost, you know, per recruit or to package or, I don't know, I would look at that. That's an easy way to make quick money. So I, I, um, I used to work with a lot of recruiters, right? So, you know, before I started my own business, but, you know, typically, you know, most recruiting agencies are going to, char- they're going to charge about 20 to 25% uh, of the starting base, right? So, you know, for per placement, right? So you play someone for 80 grand base, that's a 16 K payout for the business, right? You know, yeah. and I mean, I, I hire really, I would hire 30, 40 reps a year right? Like that was normal. I would spend boatloads of money for hiring because that quality talent is worth it. Right. I mean, I knew it cost me a hundred grand if they turned over in a year, like I knew it cost me hundred grand. So I'm like, I'm much rather spend 15 grand, 20 grand up front and reduce that first year, you know, increase my first year survival rate, which will increase their likelihood of success for year two and so on. Right. So that's all super important. I mean, you can easily, I mean, you can end monetize on business side. So easy. I mean, that's, that's, that's easy. Right. It just kind of depends on where you want to focus, right? The business part uh, or the, the individual part, you know? And you could even do a reverse model with even with reps, right? It's like, hey, if, I, if we help you find a job, you could obviously pay a, a monthly fee, but it will take a 10% cut, you know, of your starting base. If you think about this, you are offering a service that will change their life. Base salary, benefits, corporate culture, et cetera. Unless you give them some like super low level job, then obviously the percentage adjusts. But if you're getting them to say 120K base, 150K base, 200K base, you know, enterprise role, well, shoot, like you just change your life, right? You change your life. So just somebody to think about in terms of how you are monetizing it to, to run a really profitable business. Because uh, at the end, you got to yeah. still take care of the business. What do you find yeah. when people, like when you've either reached out to somebody or maybe somebody's stumbled across your website, like what questions do you typically find that they go, hey, like we're not 100% sure, you know, exactly what you offer or we have questions about this like what are some of those i wouldn't even say they're objections but kind of the, the the pieces that you know aren't super crystal clear to people right out of the gate yeah it's a good question and i'll kind of go back to the placement thing uh in a sec but yeah. um we have like revamped our website a bit over the last couple of weeks to address some of those questions but a lot of times it's like what is this how does it work right or why is this better than what I'm already doing or other things that I could be doing instead? Um, you know, cause like, for example, like you can go on to LinkedIn and like, you know, build your network there. You can go into like sales hacker or rev genius and like build your network there through like a Slack channel. Like there's a lot of ways that you can probably seek help. Um, and I think people wonder like, why is this something that I should pay attention to more than anything else? Yeah, I, I think, you know, just, I'll, I'll kind of dovetail and I'd like to hear your thoughts, Satham, on, on Marcus's feedback. But like, you know, if I was to put myself in Marcus's shoes, right, like having the, the hiring agency you worked with, like you didn't have to deal with that, right? They brought the candidates to you. I'm assuming eventually you started to trust them. So I'm just in my mind thinking out loud here of a storyline, like if I land on your page, you know, like. I have an internal hiring process now, maybe it's not working, maybe it's not efficient. And, and I'm looking for right away, like how you help me solve that. So is, is it as simple as, as kind of something where you talk about how you solve or you bring good salespeople? Because I think if, if it's too vague, and I'm sure we can get into your website, but just around, we help you find better people, that's like, okay, well, we can do that. But if it's like, you know, we, mm-hmm. we bring, I don't know, salespeople, and, and we're kind of getting into copywriting world here, but like we bring you know, we bring you the perfect salesperson or like kind of what, what, what's that, that message that right away they go, yeah, that's exactly what I need. Yeah. So on the brand side, I was kind of talking more on the candidate side on the yeah. brand side. Um, and I've sold into HR before, luckily um, it's, I always find myself in talent somehow. Um, so they kind of look at it in two buckets. A lot of times it's like either 
this is going to help us with talent acquisition. Like we have very specific ideal candidate profiles and you're going to get me in front of them and we're going to hire them very aggressively, very quickly, kind of like what Marcus was talking about. And the second part is employer branding. And that's something that's been around for a while and it's going to become more important where it's like, is this more of an active approach where we're like TA, you know, go find really great talent or is it more like a passive approach where we're just creating content through you guys, with you guys on video and then like trying to attract people towards us. And depending on who you're talking to, how big the company is, what their hiring needs are, uh, you know, what level of seniority they're looking for, it, it can go either way. They can think, they can kind of look at us and think that we're great or not so great based on that. Interesting. Yeah, I, I mean, think Justin's thoughts on that, you know, work because he's kind of worked in the startup world and, and um, I'm sure you've seen many, many rounds of hiring talent initiatives. Yeah, I don't think people have ever seen this kind of thing like live coaching of folks trying to apply to jobs and giving them tactics and strategies and it's kind of free form. I feel like the pandemic is giving us a camera and a view into a lot of things that have been closed door processes and open sourcing them, which is really fascinating. How did you come up with the idea? Is there anything like this in the world? I don't know if there's anything like it, to be honest. Uh, how did we come up with the idea? Um, I'm like, so the Barbara Walters is it like here. PG? Is it like, is it like zoom friendly? <laughs> like we were playing pop shot until two in the morning. <laughs> No, so do you guys you guys know Stephen Brady? He was on last week. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah from Interstellar. Uh, yeah, Interstellar. Yeah, yeah. So he is um, like one of our internal team members, like big advisor. Kind of uh, been we've been talk working together since the beginning of this, and it was actually inspired by uh, something that he did with his team, where he took Beck Collins' approach to uh, landing a meeting, and she talks a lot about how like first party content that the person has posted is usually like the biggest conversion when you reach out. So it's like, Hey, your post on this, 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 or, you know, some, I noticed that you blah, 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 like kind of starting with something about them is going to like grab their attention, having like uh, tying that into something that comes like from your background, ending with like a pretty strong call to action that isn't like, Hey, can we chat for 15 minutes or whatever it is? Um, he applied that to with his team at Interstellar because uh, they're targeting like heads of sales as well as recruiters and they're helping recruiters use Interstellar um, to go through their processes. So um, we were basically talking one day and we're like, why don't we try doing this and try to get people interviews? You know, so like, why don't we just try that? Right. So we're like, why aren't people doing that more? Like we, we keep hearing on LinkedIn, like if you want to get the attention of someone who's busy, like you need to be doing this or, you know, like, you need to be creating content about this or that. And we're just like, why aren't people doing this for themselves as they go, as they're kind of interviewing for a job where they are the product. Right. So we're like, let's try it. Like, screw it. What's, you know, what's going to happen. So we tried it. And within like a week, someone got back to us and they're like, yo, I got an interview like from your email. And like, we, we, and like, not only did I get an interview, but they responded and they were like, wow, this is like the best email I've gotten. Thank you so much. Um, I don't know if you guys saw like Calvin Patterson, he actually had, he's been doing this naturally. And a lot of people were doing this naturally. And we were noticing people like that, where the person he sent the video on Tuesday, got, uh, got an interview that was happening on Thursday, the guy that he was interviewing with made a post on LinkedIn shouting out Calvin for how he reached out to him for a job and was like, why aren't more candidates doing this type of stuff. And we're like, right on, dude, like people need to be doing this. So we did it. It was working. It kept working. Um, and then we come up with like fun stuff. Like we'll put like, you know, it'll be like company name, branding and white wine because we saw that the person like that has a wine certification or we'll use like really clever ways to just like pattern interrupt. And then we started getting into video and then some of the stuff that Morgan Ingram was doing. And then as we talk to more leaders, like we reach out to Jake, right? And I had a one-on-one -on -one conversation with him and I'm like, this is what we're doing. He's like, holy shit, dude. Like, hell yeah. Bilal Batrawi, same thing. Justin Michael, the first time I reached out to him, he's like, hell yeah, I can show you the LinkedIn conversation. It was just like, boom, boom, boom. Like people got it right away. It was like, of course, it's a no brainer. So we're like, let's double down. Let's like keep doing it. Um, that's kind of the way it came about. You know, and I just thought of a really good marketing scheme for you guys would be to, and I mean, you might have to maybe stage this a little bit, but it would be to like actually show screenshots of how 
those outreach efforts work, you know, um, cause I will say right up front, I get just garbage in my inbox. And the only things I respond to are when it looks like that person either knows me or was referred by someone in my network that I, I know and respect, or they took the time to actually learn something about me. And it's not just generic garbage. Like I've responded to those and maybe that's, maybe that's ego or I don't know what it is. Probably ego. I don't know, but it's a positive, like psychological stimulus. And for me, it's like, they took the time to do something. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to give them some time and see where this is going. Um, but those conversations are always like weirdly wonderful. Like they're just, you know, quirky. And, um, I, I mean, I would say that could be a huge marketing campaign. If you, if you were to get permission to kind of share how that works, um, and actually screenshot some of that, that would be really, really smart. Cause then you could show it actually in action. And it's not just like, we're, you know, you're not just saying this is the process that we follow, but no, oh no, we got permission to actually show you this process and how it works. Um, that would be a big deal, but I don't know. I think everyone here is on point. Like this is a really interesting concept. So how are you guys, um, generating leads into your funnel, like your, into your pipeline? Do you have a process in place or has it been just kind of purely organic people kind of reaching out as a result of? Yeah. Are you using Craigslist? <laughs> I miss it. I miss it. It was Not so for this, fun. No. 2004. <laughs> Craigslist Nobody is like this Craigslist easy old now. grandpa. E to B encounters. You know? Let's get hired. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hiring someone to sell Speedos. <laughs> yeah. I'm a pawn right now. Marcus, I need uh, your resume. <laughs> it'll be a video resume. Yeah. Marcus, how many, how many times do you get? Us. Marcus, how many times do you get outreach and people use a speedo in their outreach campaign to you? It's very rare. That's the thing. See? It's very. I mean, I get so many templated, templated you know pieces, right? Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Hey, Ethan, and and I feel bad. I should have done my my homework and and watched a few of the videos. I mean, I obviously I took a look at the website, but what's interesting is we had somebody sign up as a to be a participant a while back and they were like in between roles so we reached out to them and they're like ah, i'm not really in a company so i'm not sure what i'm going to demo and then internally we went well why don't we um why don't we get this person and if this is what you guys do um then i i feel terrible for you know not doing my research but we said why don't we get him to do his like research on the company he's looking to get a job with and then we'll basically on our five on Friday, get him to kind of basically be pitching the company and we'll be throwing objections at him. And like basically almost like doing kind of a mini live interview on the fly. We record that. And then we're like, we package that up and we'll be like, Hey man, you send this to your prospective employer, like show yeah. them like, you know, what, what you're, you're trying. And um, in the end, it obviously never happened. And that's not what we're trying to do, but we're like, Hey, if we could use this platform to help somebody it, like our, is, yeah, that's a good idea. Is, is what you're doing like kind of a twist of that or a take on that? It's a little bit of a take on that. So like, for example, um, we came up with this like video ebook idea that we actually did for Jake, where it kind of looks like an ebook, but it's like flips through and it's all on video. It's on YouTube. So one of our candidates was like, I went through an interview and the CEO of the company was like, look, I don't have a role for you, but if you can put together a presentation or put together a plan for how you can get me more customers in marketing. I don't have to go into the details, but I'll create a role for you. Right. So he came to us and, and this is another thing that happens a lot. He was like, um, so I, so I, this is the challenge. What do I do? Right. Do I write an email? Do I write a PowerPoint? Do I write a whatever, a doc, blah, blah, blah. And we're like, dude, create a video presentation, like do a video. And we actually have this ebook template. Let's do a video ebook as like your presentation instead, it's much more interactive. And we like title the page looks really cool. And he was like, okay, sounds good. So I'm going to make a video ebook about why I'm such a great fit for the role. Right. And we're like, no, don't do that. Like, please don't make an ebook. That's like, I'm so amazing. And these are all the great things. And I crush quota because everybody does that. Right. <laughs> what you want to do is like, go in, use like, you know, challenger sales, Sandler gap selling, like apply all these practices, enlighten him, illuminate problems he's having, like, dig in and just like do the job before you get in the job. Right. And yeah. it's simple. Right. But it's not easy. Right. So like anybody technically could do this, right? Like if anybody wanted to just see what we're doing and some people are starting to do it a little bit, but 
um, you know, we created this hashtag like C to E on LinkedIn and it's like our take on like, is it B to B? Is it D to C? It's C to E. It's candidate to employer. Like it's the same thing. So anybody technically could do this, but it really requires like a very specific type of person. So like you have to have the HR tech experience. You have to have hired people before. You have to have a background in sales and marketing, right? You have to have sold into HR. Like these are all the things that we have that somebody can't just like copy right away because I believe that aside from like maybe therapy and like some other things like B2B sales is like the hardest thing to do period. Like getting somewhat like that level of persuasive writing that it requires to like break, like interrupt someone's day and get them to agree to meet with you as a stranger to actually hear a sales pitch is like one of the most difficult things to do. Right. So if you are going to get advice from anyone about how you can, break through a tough job market, like get it from somebody who has experience in B2B sales. And yeah, we have them. You just sold it yourself. Like run with that, you know, like put, like you need to record a video basically like with an obligatory brag session because that <laughs> right there hit the nail on the head. Like I'm like, yeah, man, like it is, I could see that. Like I could see how like the psychology of B2B sales would be really really influential on the like the talent hiring scene you know and how you could use those psychological motivators and the little quirks and and the the email templates and copyright and all, how we weave all that in to try to get to understand a customer enough or to build that level of trust in that relationship that they ultimately make a financial commitment which is the same thing as hiring someone so you know like if you use that terminology you just use there like you'll nail it especially when you're trying to get uh, a partnership with you know um a, like another established business organization mm -hmm. like that right there is huge and i i think i mean i don't know I, anyone else can speak up but that like hit me because yeah. i was like yeah you know you're so right i don't know if i'm allowed to disclose this but i'm in several mastermind groups to solve that problem and in those masterminds are folks like patrick downs amy quick and francois we basically sit around all day extracurricularly talking about not all day email. not all day I, uh, I do a day job yeah exactly i mean it's it's like in mastermind to figure out how to be better at b2b is the key right i i lean on people like amy and, and francois to help me be better because it's always changing right i want to take the Josh yeah. Braun and Beck Holland and find exactly. other methods as well and build upon it. Yeah. And like, we study it. We're very passionate about it. We love it. My wife's a psychologist that helps. So we use a lot of these like techniques. Um, and like I said, like technically anybody can do it, but you know, it's not like they can't just copy our experience and our network and like how we are able to um, get amazing people like you to join these sessions. I feel like if I was in a prospective employer and, um, and again, I, I, I should see exactly the types of videos you're sending, but let's say, you know, I had a job posting and in your video, you guys were kind of helping strategize with this candidate, like how you're going to solve my problem. And then maybe even give me some examples, like, Hey, this is how I'm going to start doing some outbound, like showing maybe, you know, the target list of people you'd be going after, like really kind of going, cause because what I've seen in that interview cycle is like, we all know like the, the traditional boring questions, but then like really, when you really start to get into like, okay, well, how are you going to like actually solve some of our problems? That That's like the real, those are the gems. If you could like surface that right away and like show like, hey, Marcus, like I'm going to come in here and I'm going to do these things. And I saw you had this on your post, but I actually disagree. Like, I think I should do this. Like my guess is Marcus would be like, oh man, this person like is actually thinking and really challenging me, I'm interested versus, you know, hey, I'm this really cool guy. Like, look, I got funny glasses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I, yeah. I'm thinking out loud, but Marcus, I, I, I don't know, um, like, you know, what, 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 what breaks or breaks through the noise for you? I mean, that's, it, it's really it, right? I mean, those who actually do hyper personalization, you know, obviously video is the absolute best way. There's, there's no question about it, right? Like hyper-personalization through every single touch point, it cuts through the noise so much faster, right? Like you don't need a 12 email sequence. You can send one video and you'll crush your 12 email sequence, right? Like, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it, it's, it's so key, right? And I think the thing, and, and, and you know, I think you, you guys are right to a certain extent. Like, yeah, anyone can kind of do the same thing. 
but what you are offering is a proven step-by-step -step blueprint. That's yep. what candidates want. That's what your, 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 your market wants. They, they, they know they can Google everything, but mm -hmm. what they want is a proven step-by-step -step system that helps them land and win interviews for their future dream job. That's what you're offering, right? You're, uh, you're helping them build unshakable interviewing confidence so they can go in there and win every single touch point, stand out and be the absolute most obvious choice, you know? And that's what you're offering, yeah. right? And anyone can go anywhere, but by working with you, that's what you can give them, you know? And that's, and that's very powerful. It's a very powerful thing to offer specifically to salespeople because most people do not view from the whole scope, right? And yes, they can go anywhere, but reality is, is people love to have their hands held. Mm -hmm. That's simple. They want someone to hold their hand and say, okay, Step one, do this. Step two, do this. Don't do this. All right? Like, mm -hmm. do this. Yeah. don't write this email. Reword this. Yeah. The rewording is a huge part of it. Right. You know, like, because we'll, we'll, like, and people take it for granted. And, and we actually did a, something called Word for Word with Morgan Ingram because, yeah. like, he nails his language a lot. Right? And it's like, there's a huge difference between, like, you know, like, is this something that you're interested in versus, like, is this something that you might be interested in? Right. Right. And we'll, and we'll tell people like, yeah, you know, like send a message that says like, you know, how, how, like, whatever, like, how can I make this easier for you? And, or, or like, do you have any hesitations on hiring me or something like that? And they will be like, yeah, like, you know, they'll, they'll, just, they'll just like jumble up the words and they don't realize like the order and the exact wording they're using makes such a huge difference. And we're so like, cut, like honed in on that and learning every day, like Justin said, that it's changing. Right. Um, but yeah, no, I love that. I, and that's, I guess I, think I also that, that's key. system system. That's what they want a system. Totally. Yeah. And I, I also love the point that you made tying it to their interview confidence. Cause that's also something that we've heard a lot in feedback from members is that what they get out of it. And, and it's, I hadn't a hundred percent linked it to process the way that you just did, but they get this feeling of like, I didn't really know what to do. I was feeling really down. I wasn't getting a lot of interviews. And like, I felt like I had tried everything and I was just feeling like shit, you know? Right. And then you guys came in and you helped me and they, they can't even articulate exactly how we helped a lot of the time, right. but they were like, I just felt better. Like I had a direction and I, you know, I, even if I didn't see results right away, it was that feeling that they had. And right. it is, it's the, the process having a step-by-step -step right. that right. you can show works and you know, there's a next step just makes people feel yeah, the follow through and everything. Yeah. I think that the power of network too, like rolling that into what you do and how, how you can intelligently use you know, your network and network connections and things like that to, to elevate your standing, you know, um, I mean, that's a large component of it too. That it's really hard to teach because mm -hmm. teaching people that network is not easy because they do it like idiots. Like, Hey, I see we've got five common connections and I'm like the five common connections I've probably never spoken with in my life. And I don't know, one of them could be a complete creeper. Like I've had some creepers, you know, so that doesn't really say anything to me, but when you kind of um, teach people how to network intelligently, <laughs> I almost said his name. <laughs> I stopped myself from say like, like Patrick just put in the chat, home dude's name and I almost said it out loud <laughs> you would have had to have beeped me out like that would have been our first beeped over zoom anyway, Video edit. yeah but no it, it is it is like a big component of of the hiring process too um and I like it you know something I was thinking about when you were talking though is if you could get some video content surrounding HR recruiters hiring managers and the problems they're seeing now that COVID has kind of escalated the number of uh, applicants. And, you know, the, the one thing that I've heard a lot of times is like, how do I get through the, the resume screening process? Because, you know, those automators are just kicking back resumes, you know, with, with no, with little, just with little regard for the actual human behind it. They're just filtering keywords and you could have someone that's absolutely amazing. And they just kind of have a resume that just misses the mark in some algorithmic way but that person is absolutely the right one for that role. So I think that's another thing that you can speak to um, with a high degree of confidence and the fact that you cannot depend on hitting submit on any position that you apply for as the be all end all of getting your foot in the door for that role. That's absolutely out of the equation. So 
applying for jobs as a whole has to structurally change, you know, because it's just, you're, you're, it's like winning the lottery, you know, the, the chances of you getting that job against 3000 other people is reduced right out the gate. The minute you hit submit, because a computer is reading your resume and saying, no. Um, so what you do, if you add that on top of the, the fact that they're, they're screwed before they even apply in, in some ways. I mean, that's, I don't yeah, want to say sell tough. the negative, but that's the reality of the situation. A lot of times yeah. that right there, if you can improve incrementally improve their chances of success in any measurable way, it's worth a shot, especially if they don't have to pay you until they get hired. I mean, right. what's the risk? There's no risk there at yeah. all. Here's the thing too, is a lot Dude. of them, candidates are going to have a lot of internal objections, right? And their internal objections are going to be like, well, I can't do what they do. I'm not good on video. I don't know how to write copy. I'm not confident in myself. COVID, the pandemic, the economy. I'm an Asian male living in Portland, Oregon. I mean, whatever. They make stuff up, right? It's, just, it's what happens, right? What I would, yeah. If I were you guys, this is exactly what I'd do. If I ran your business, I would literally go, I would build an auto webinar. And on the auto webinar, I would teach like three to five secrets that really sell the path to how to get hired, but not just like, it's like literally like you know, secret number one, like you got to treat it like a sales process. That'd be like, oh, wow, I guess you're right. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you basically sell them on really seeing the new mythology of, because the old path is uh, uh, you apply, 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 cross your fingers. New path is run like a sales process. So on the mm -hmm. webinar, you sell them on that pure concept, just a bird's eye view of what the system looks like. At the very end, it's simply this, either number one, you can go on your own and try to keep doing what you're doing, try to figure it out. Or number two, you could set up a time to chat with us. So go to this link, go ahead and apply here, which allows you to screen out all the crappy uncoachable candidates at a first level screen, right? And then book a time on our calendar. And then on the calendar, then you can actually have a conversation on this to make sure it's a really good fit and get them into your program. And I would literally do it as an auto webinar because that allows you to run at a high, high rate. Or you can do a live one if you want, but obviously more issues. Yeah. So that's what I would do. How are you guys? Yeah. Would you put like the paid program like and make it visible? Because right now it, it's, we only send it to people that have, well, would you put that front and center-ish? Uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do, uh, I wouldn't say, uh, the webinar itself, I would do completely free. And then right. the offer at the end, I would say, Hey, listen, like, like it is, if, you, if we decide it's a good fit to work together, there is a fee and we'll only discuss that if it makes sense to work together. Cause you, cause if you have uncoachable people, it doesn't matter. You're not, you're going to hate your life working with them anyways. Right. So right. Um, this is literally what I do with my business. Just so you know. So I, I literally wake mm -hmm. up and my calendar is full of appointments. Like I don't need to do anything. Like I literally mm -hmm. run my system. So, um, but you can do the same concept there for you that in the application it filters them out. Right. But the key is they must be sold on the concept of that. A hiring process is a sales process, a B2B sales process, but mm -hmm. it's simple, but hard yeah. to do. Right. And the, it's like the, first they understand what it is, but the how is with you. Right. So you sell them two path path and you, you sell them on, on the webinar, your path. And then on the call, they're sold on working with you, right? Yeah. Because you can't sell them on you on the, on the webinar if they're not sold on the path. So right. when, you say, uh, uh, when you say auto webinar, Marcus, just so I understand, like basically you've pre-recorded it, you schedule it, and it just, like, you, you know, you're saying, I see it, you share it in your post. You've got this here. It's kind of the lead gen tool. People go on, they watch, and if they go, yeah, I'm interested, they fill out an appointment, and you know you have kind of a qualified lead the next 100%. day to talk to. 100%. Oh, so they actually sign up like – with a time and then it runs it's not like it's uh, just a video that can my i mean i have mine set up where it automatically just flows through so they can watch it anytime it's an on-demand webinar so my, mine's a little more sophisticated in terms of the but you don't need to have a stuff right um but i have it automated so this way they can watch whatever time zone they're in and it just works for them and even if they don't if they decide to not work that's no big deal they'll get lots of value and be inspired through what you train on right so like oh you know that's a good point i should go do that and then yeah. they, later on they might be like because i feel to watch it they don't want to book a call no problem and then a month later they're like you know what marcus can you help me out <laughs> like i tried it didn't work i need my i need some help okay cool 
Let's get on a call now, right? And, and do you and, and then when they fill out a form to uh, get on your calendar, do you have some filters there that it's like, well, if they're not willing to answer this or if they're if they won't, you know, commit to this, then they don't get on your calendar? Yeah. So I have um it's it's like it's like 10 questions they have to fill out, right? For for like for what I do, right? But yours could be like, hey, you know, like uh what's what what was your prior role? What uh what is your goal role? Uh what's your goal income? You know, like on a scale of one to 10, how open are you to coaching and feedback? Right. So then you get some qualifiers there. And then maybe the last question, like, like, like if it's a good fit, uh, do you have the resources to invest or to pay for this program? Assuming we, we help you get a job. Mm -hmm. So now they're like, Oh, okay. Like, I mean, a $9 a month is, is a nothing ask. I mean, people spend that much like every day at Starbucks. Right. Right. You know? Exactly. Yeah. So you just have some, and, and here's the thing: your questions may, um, it may get more refined the more you do it as you uncover things that are like you know what, like um, okay, uh, choose them: marketing or sales. All right. Obviously, it's it's different, right? Um, you know, that could be a good one, or however you want to differentiate. How many years experience? You know, um, and, here, and here's the thing: if you think about this, um, those who take the time to watch a webinar for one. They're already sending out because they're trying to open a learning. If they take time to apply, they're already like, they're thinking ahead. They're like, they're like admitting to themselves, I need some help. And then the book of time, now they're showing more commitment. So just by even doing that, they're, you're already like kind of filtering through some of the people who are just not going to be coachable, right? And then of course, you'll still have people on the call that are not going to be coachable. And you have to feel them out and really uncover really what's on their mind, what they're struggling with, right? Because you might hear many of their internal objections and it becomes crystal clear all the limiting beliefs they're not going to be able to remove while working with them. And of course, only you'll be frustrated and so will they and nobody really wins then. Part of me thinks there should be a video element to the application. So we did. We have done that actually. And um, yeah. how did that <laughs> look? This is, it's very good reinforcement for what we've already done. I'm like, oh yeah, we're on the right track. Cool. <laughs> yeah. It's, that's an interesting one. I mean, I know we're coming up on time. Uh, we set it up in a cool way where you, where like it's a zoom link and you jump in and it's automatically recording and they watch like a short intro video that Serena and I did. And they just like talk about their challenges. What are they doing to stand out? You know, some of the similar questions that you were talking about. Um, most people did it really well. There were some people that just like didn't check their email, I guess, but uh, they, they, they expected someone to be on the other side of the call, but we've been like really clear about it. We've been going back and forth. Like right now you can see on our website, it's just like name, email, LinkedIn, and it's like less friction. Um, the other, uh, the other route that we had taken before was like a much longer form and you have to actually set up a time to record your video intro to get in. Cause we do want to vet them before they get online with you, Marcus and, yep. and all, right. Like we don't want just random people jumping into these videos cause they're, it's like this, it's like very small group sessions. Um, so, and we do try to match people based on their challenges, you know, um, and their personalities and everything. So Patrick, Patrick, yeah. why don't you, uh, you know, clo it. close us off, like lead, lead, <laughs> lead us into greener pastures. Well, I, I know that you guys are talking about not putting the offering on the website, but I'm, I'm going on your website. I'm like, how the fuck do I pay you? <laughs> like, that's my number one question is like, I don't understand how to give you money right now. And that's okay. not good. If I'm looking to buy your service and like, I've heard about you on a different channel, I want to be able to just go get your service. And there's nowhere I can do that. Right. Without signing up for the community. Um, also sub point. I feel like there's a huge market for like making really like educational content with the people that you've focused on in your videos. Like people like Justin are hilarious. You can make a corporate bro style skit about like unemployment failures. And like, I haven't showered in six days. Now I'm in my underwear, like applying for stuff. And like, that's the kind of stuff that goes viral. Cause especially if you're in a situation where you're a little bit depressed and you don't have a job, you want to laugh. And if you can make those people laugh, and then point them to where, somewhere they can give you money, that would be great. Or even the webinar thing. Yeah. Also, the, uh, the community, are all the, the bigger names that you've gotten involved in the videos, are they involved in the community as well, like actively? Uh, on like Slack? Yeah, not, the Slack community. No, we kind of decided not to. 
Um, but we've thought about it. There's this sense of like when you join something like Rev Genius or one of those macro communities, there's just like social uh, velocity that kind of happens where like when people are talking to people that have larger networks, they start forming connections and they could potentially get your content out to more people. I'm like, why isn't everything you're making being spread out by everyone in the community? Like if you have a hundred people in there, why aren't all those people marketing for you and like together with you? And like something that we've done is we have groups of people that we're friends with that love what we do. And like, we all create stuff for each other and promote it. And like, that's something that I think you could especially do in a micro community uh, that I haven't seen. And I, I really like a lot of the content on your LinkedIn page. I was just looking at it, but not a lot of people are seeing it. It looks like, so it would help if more people were promoting it for you, especially if you got more on like the humor edutainment side of things. Yeah. I think that'll be big. I mean, I mean like your vibe goes really well with like what Marcus is doing too. You know, so like definitely use your network too. like, don't be afraid to ask people to um, boost your content as well. Be like, Hey, can you guys share this? Or, you know, when you, when you do show up and you record a video with us, like the expectation is that they should be sharing that with their network too, you know, and you can give them the verbiage and the post and the hashtags and everything that they need to be using to, to boost that content. Um, but I mean, you guys have such a cool vibe and it's different. Um, and how do you, how do you portray difference when there's a lot of noise out there? Um, and I think that's through how you interact, which you're already doing. I mean, like your website's super cool. Um, I put in the chat about industry pivot. I think that's something that you guys need to roll into. I mean, you might already, already, what about those people that are coming out of careers where they've been doing 30 years, the same industry, they know it. And now yeah. all of a sudden that inch, like, especially like, um, you know, um, let's say restaurant sales, you know, a lot of those guys have been impacted. Those jobs are not coming back anytime soon. Um, so there's that there's, you know, brick and mortar retail, you know, there's a lot, a lot of sales jobs surrounding brick and mortar retail. Those jobs are gone. Tra yeah. Travel, you know, so mm -hmm. where, how do you help them pivot um, into, you know, taking the skills that they have in that job? I mean, sales is sales, right? Um, and teach them different nomenclature, different jargon. Uh, Cause when they're in a, when they're sitting in front of a, a hiring manager, you know, if they can spout off like a sales process and use like jargon that will be like, I know what I'm talking about. Um, that portrays a level of confidence that, you know, Hey, I might not have done this job in this industry, but mm -hmm. I can nail this. And I know I, what I'm talking about, like I sell tech and I am like the least technologically savvy person. I'm like, how do you get this screen share to work? But I can sell it because I can figure out the nomenclature and I can put the confidence behind it. And you can teach people to do that too for like this industry pivot. And that could be like a component, yeah. like industry pivot, you know? Yeah. That's a video a right people there. Are like Amy afraid. trying to figure out screen share. Right. I know. No, I love it because we can make Cut content around that. Because a lot of those people, just like the last thing is like a lot of those people, the real core is like, I'm going to have to take a step down. I was a director. Now I'm going to have to be a manager. Like that's an ego hit. It's a financial hit. And now I have to pay someone to help me take that ego hit and financial hit on top of it. And they just have to like wrap their head around that. It's like unfortunate, but that's kind of what they're feeling a lot of times. But Marcus, because you like you did something like that, right? I mean, you're into you like you, you stepped back from a really, really successful career and kind of started, like mm -hmm. dropped yourself down a couple bars and had to work your way up. So yeah. I think, I think, you know, like use people like Marcus, like have him come on and tell his story to give that confidence. You know, I know Francois trying to cut us off. No, well, yeah. I, mean, if I, I was going to ask that people have a hard stop, but Marcus, maybe, maybe you can tell your story and then maybe we should wrap. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So, um, you know, and I think for sure the stories piece, I mean, I think a lot of times just to add to this before I show the story is, you know, a lot of times when people are in the deep negative depths of their mind, right, and they are just mentally destroying themselves because they lost their job, they're not sure how to pay for the pay for groceries, their rent, and they're about getting evicted and all these things, and they have kids, and maybe there's hospital bills, there's all these things going on, they start losing confidence in themselves, right, and, and you know, they, they want to uh, obviously improve their skills for interviewing, but what they're also often seeking is support, guidance, and light inspiration. Right. And that's what you are offering. I mean, at the end of the day, that's where it's like what you guys offer is more than just getting a job. You are transforming them into a better version of themselves. And oftentimes that comes with breaking down limiting beliefs, 
internal things between their mind because reality is the hardest territory to manage is always the one between your ears. And if you can manage that piece, you can do whatever you want, whether it's interviewing, sales, whatever it's going to be, right? So, um, and, and for example, you know, with, with what happened to me, you know, I knew because um, I had perspective, right? That's, that's what it was. When I took, when I took, I to take a job that, that dropped me down multiple levels, that was me less pay and everything else. It was because I got crystal clear and had perspective knowing what are my end goals, I knew that, right? And of course, then I did the proper research to put myself in a position to jump into a company that I knew I would have to earn my stripes. So even though it was very painful, right, to take multiple steps back, right, to lose my reputation, lose my, all my results, because none of it matters anymore, and to go into a completely new industry that I knew nothing about, in which I wasn't even sure if I could replicate my success, but because I knew what my end goal was going to be and the means goals to help, help me get there, I knew it was going to be the best move. Super scary for sure, but by understanding it, it helped me, right? Now, I had also the benefit of it was my choice, right? But sometimes people need to understand, you know what, when they're lost in depths of their mind, all they're thinking about is on Maslow's hierarchy of needs is their basic needs. That's all they're worried about. They're not thinking about their future, future self, right? So, but by helping them understand that and take a step back outside of their own mind to see perspective from other people, to understand that sometimes you truly, it, it's cliche, but you, you do take two steps back, move five steps forward, wherever that saying goes, that can mm -hmm. very much happen as long as you have the right attitude and the right work ethic towards it to get yourself there. So those are all very real things that. for sure. Man, I'm motivated. Thank you guys. I'm fired so up. Much. I know. Yeah, I'm ready. I, 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 like today's Friday. Can it be Monday? Like, <laughs> I know it's like 7 p.m. Some... for me. I'm ready to do a whole nother day of work. I'm like, let's go. Let's do it. I'm ready yeah. to grab some white snake. You know, I'm ready. <laughs> you know, you know what would be, you know what would be really fun to do is like to do a five on Friday edition where we bring on people that are looking for jobs, and we could bring on like Haytham and Serena and like you know, uh, lemons and crossover. You know, some, yeah. Like, and we could do, yeah, like a takeover or something like that. We could have tab on and I don't know, that would be really fun because I feel like that's so relevant right now. Yeah. So I, awesome. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah. Thanks for coming on guys. I'm really stoked for you. And yeah, uh, thank you. it's a wonderful model. Marcus, Marcus so much guys. Marcus. Yeah. All right, guys. Rock. Have a great weekend. Bye, guys. Have a good weekend. Thanks so much, guys. Yeah. Have a good day. Cheers. Bye.